All right, now we can finally do a question and answer session. All right, so we are going to split this up into three sections since I got a bunch of different questions, although a lot of them tended to fall into a few categories. Uh, so first up, we'll do music since that's probably why you know who I am. Uh, second, we'll do like personal questions about, you know, me. Uh, and then lastly, we'll do uh, monster related questions because I got a lot of those. So. Uh, let's get started. All right, so we'll start with a question from Michael Talbert. He's one of my patrons. He asked essentially what uh, inspired me to get into music. What was, uh, who was maybe the first artist that inspired me to get into music? So when I was a real little kid, I took uh, piano lessons. My parents, uh, you know, had me do piano lessons. From then, I didn't really touch music very much. Uh, I was in band in middle school, but uh, wasn't really about you know making my own music. Um, then this uh, cute girl in my homeroom class who sat right behind me introduced me to this band called Nirvana, and um, I really liked Nirvana. And from then on, really kind of. Kind of the way I interact with music is if I really enjoy something, um, and actually this isn't just music, this is with a lot of things. Um, if I really enjoy something, I wanna make my own. If I see someone build something, I'm like, I wanna build one of those my own myself. Um, this is why I kind of have seven million hobbies. So whether that be uh, writing music or uh, woodworking or you know making D&D &D terrain, even though I don't play D&D, it's that kind of stuff. Whenever I see somebody make something, I'm kind of like, I want to do that too. So I think that's kind of what got me into music. Uh, Lillianne from Instagram asked me a couple questions, um, but one was, who are artists that inspire me? Um, I think as far as Synthwave goes, um, you may or may not have heard before, but uh, Carpenter Brute is the first uh, Synthwave I really ever heard, uh, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, I listened to him for several months before I realized Synthwave was like a thing. That's what kind of inspired me to make Synthwave. But as for uh, artists that inspire me right now, uh, St. Lucia, I think they're pretty awesome. Um, if you've ever seen their live stuff, it just looks like they're having a ball. And uh, I think if, yeah, I love St. Lucia. Secondly is Fickle Friends. I listen to Fickle Friends way too much, um, but they just have a wonderful uh, retro uh, feel to them. Um, and I think they're great songwriters. And yeah, so. Right now, Fickle Friends and St. Lucia. They inspire me a lot. Lillian also, um, unless it's Liliana, sorry, either way, also asked me uh, how I get through creative blocks. Uh, good question, because I haven't quite figured that out yet either. Um, during COVID, I had a really bad one and I didn't like really make any music throughout COVID, so that sucked. Uh, and the way I got over that was really just time blocking. Uh, I just set, a, set aside a time to work on music. Um, I'd literally uh, dim the lights and light some candles and try and like make some mood and ambiance and just did that week after week in, in an effort to kind of woo my creativity and that seemed to help a good bit. So uh, yeah, I guess really just uh, by treating my creativity with respect rather than just kind of be like whoosh, create something whoosh, like that. What noises are fun. Uh, Chris from Instagram asks, what is it about Synthwave that really, you know, inspires me or, or that really sticks with me? Uh, it's nostalgia, pure nostalgia. Just, um, you know, growing up on movies and, 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 that, and music and so, you know, it's just kind of, it's comfort food, basically. So I got two questions about gear. One from Jody Fowler, who's a patron. He asked if I could have any piece of gear, what would it be? And in truth, I'm not much of a gearhead. You know, I've been playing guitar most of my life, and I own 
Granted, at this point, I own like three guitars, but like two of them are acoustic guitars. Neither of them are super fancy. I don't have a lot of space for it. Well, I have space, but I don't want to use space uh, for synths. So I've never really gotten all that attracted to synths. The one thing I do envy about people with synths is having a physical control surface uh, that they can work on and, and adjust things. And, and I think that there's definitely a lot of value in that tactile interaction. So what I'd really love is just a universal control surface that works with like everything flawlessly, which, you know, doesn't really exist. Um, every, every time I've tried to get into like MIDI interfaces, um, you really got to like set it up for every individual synth plugin and it's just, it never works. I've never been able to get it to work very well. So, so yeah, if I could have any piece of gear, it would be magic. My second question about gear was from Jocelyn Bernal from um, Twitter, and she asked what kind of synths do I have? Uh, and I, my knee-jerk reaction is none, but that's not actually true. So um, this one I got from, this is a Roland FA-0806, my bad, 06. Um, Roland FA-06, uh, it's a digital synth. Um, I bought it from my friends in um, Dead Register. They're a local band that are pretty awesome if you like dark, dreary, gothy rock music. It's pretty awesome. Uh, so I bought this from them. Uh, yeah, Digital Synth. Uh, I like it because it very much... Uh, it has a lot of old synth sounds. But I really got it just so I could play live with it rather than depending on my laptop. I used to pretend... I used to depend on soft synths on my laptop while I was playing live uh, and I didn't really like that so now all the keyboard parts that I play live come out of this thing. So not the sexiest piece of gear, you know, it's a workstation uh, synth, but uh, it sounds good so I like it. Uh, Jody Fowler, uh, my patron, again asked, uh, that he said, I know you were in a doom metal band for a little bit, what is your favorite Black Sabbath song? And while this may be sacrilegious, in truth, um, I don't really like Black Sabbath that much. Um, I've always found Ozzy Osbourne's voice kind of annoying. Please don't kill me. Lenny DeWin on Facebook asked me uh, if I play saxophone. Uh, the question is, or the answer is no, I do not play saxophone. Um, I've, I've had two people play saxophone for me. I've had Mike Gresh who played just that short little part on, um, is it 10 and 2, I think? Anyways, it's on the Sweater Weather album. Um, he played that, and then all the other saxophone that you hear on my more recent stuff is Chris Del Camino, uh, who's an amazing saxophone player. Um, he makes his own music, and he plays in the band Hari. Check him out, uh, he's amazing. Got a couple questions from Kim on Twitter. Uh, one is, what would you do if you, have, if you ever played a show without a single mistake? Uh, my answer to that is, I don't know, I haven't done that yet. Uh, but it's sad that uh, that's a question that anyone would ask because that's how much I mess up on stage. Whee! The second question was, what's one movie song that you wish you could cover? Uh, it'd be Robot Romp by Alan Silvestri from Flight of the Navigator. Just a great song. Just love it. It's great. Doreen Manning asked on Instagram, uh, what is my opinion of synthwave songs that start with the sound of a cassette going into a cassette player? or have a newsreel uh, talking about computers or video games and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> I feel like you're trying to stir up drama. You know, tropes, man. They exist for a reason because they work, but at the same time, they're overused. My biggest thing with, honestly, when I think of uh, news clips songs, uh, I really think of um, Mitch Murder, uh, who did that a few times. I have no real qualms with it. The problem I have with it is that I feel personally it makes the song less re-listenable. Uh, so like a song with lyrics or a song without any lyrics, you know, you can listen to it a million times. A song, for, for me anyways, a song with like talking on it just makes it feel like, oh yeah, I've already heard this. So yeah, I feel like it kind of detracts from the song. So yeah, that's my opinion. And last of the music related questions, Thea on Twitter asked, do you want to play some creepy music together? And my answer to that is, hell yeah, girl, let's do it. All right, so moving on to questions about me. Woo, narcissism central. Here we go. Okay, 
Amanda Reap, one of my patrons, asked me, do I have a favorite sweater out of my sweater collection? And in truth, I don't have that many sweaters. Certainly not uh, sweaters that you would deem as vampire stepdad sweaters. Um, I really have one. It's like the official vampire stepdad sweater. Uh, it's actually right over here. Hold on. So this is my vampire stepdad sweater. I literally keep it uh, in a closet in my office, like alongside my music gear, because that's where it belongs. Um, Ta-da! I found this at a Goodwill uh, very early on. Well, no, it was it was before um, my um, Carpenter Brute show, my very first show. Uh, I found this, uh, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, it's too perfect!" Um, it's like an extra, extra, extra. No, it's a it's a double XL, which I wear a large, so it was way too big. Um, so I actually took it to a dry cleaner and had them tailor it for me. So they made it skinnier, but they weren't able to shorten the sleeves. So the sleeves are too long for my arms. So that's fun, but that's okay. Cause I just wear it all bunched up here. Anyways, I always claim that this sweater is, is my power. Um, people only like me as much as they do because of the magic of the sweater. I've definitely noticed that this sweater seems to, uh, compliment my body very well because I've, I've had several people make comments about me looking uh, like very thin and buff in this sweater, like I work out, which could not be further from the truth. Um, so, you know, extra double pleasure for that. Um, I have had one person uh, send me a sweater. Um, it is uh, a pretty fun one. Uh, the only problem is it has a really high collar and uh, it itches my neck like crazy and I absolutely can't stand uh, neck itchiness. So it feels like when you just got your haircut. So it's kind of rough. So honorable mention from Cobra Commander on Twitter. He also asked where I find all my dope sweaters. Uh, again, I've only really found the one, um, and it is uh, at Goodwill. But I do. I regularly look at like Goodwill and those like thrift stores for uh, other sweet sweaters. Um, but there's just never really been one that that really topped the original. So why try? Lenny DeWin from Facebook asked if I like board games. I love the idea of board games. Unfortunately, with my ADD, um, once I've like figured out the mechanic of the game, I get bored really quickly. Like, um, I have no interest in mastering games. I enjoy the part of figuring out how to play them, but uh, once I've figured out how to play them, I'm kind of like, okay. Like, I'm not very competitive. And so the drive to win isn't really enough to keep me interested. So unfortunately, like I love the idea of like sitting down and playing board games with my family and stuff like that, but I very rarely actually enjoy it. Lillian from Instagram asked, what is the perfect date for me? I love going on dates with my wife. I like watching movies, but not for a date because you like paying money to sit quietly in a room with someone you care about. So uh, I don't love that. Um, we like to just go out to dinner and maybe uh, if we can, like go for like a nice walk, you know, around an old city or something. I don't know. Um, really, I just, I like having good conversation with her. I'm madly in love with her and, you know, spending time with her is a great way to spend my time. So yeah, basically anything that uh, is conducive to having a conversation with my wife, that's a, that's a good date for me. Doreen Manning on Instagram asked if I've ever left a country gate slightly ajar. Yes, I have. And it is my understanding that you should leave gates as you found them, whether that be open or closed. Doreen Manning also said, Lego, discuss. And I will say this, number one, I really appreciate that you used the correct branding of Lego, not Legos, and it's all capital. Um, for some reason, I'm a real stickler for branding. Like if I'm talking about Lego online, I will type it capital L-E-G-O. Um, because I don't know why that's important to me. I don't know, but it makes me think about the fact that on Twitter, not on Twitter, on Spotify, my night shift album is not in all capitals. It's night colon shift and only the N and S are capitalized and I hate it. It drives me crazy, but I can't do anything about it. But anyways, Lego, uh, I love Lego. Um, it's expensive, so I don't get to do it that much. But uh, I have a couple pieces here, so like I have this little, I forgot what they call them, big heads or whatever. Uh, so a little bit. Um, he's awesome. Uh, there's a Joker version of this that I wanted to like see if I could get different colors of and basically make a vampire stepdad version out of the Joker one. 
but I never did that. And then another one, uh, in case you're noticing a pattern, uh, this one was a Christmas gift. Uh, I really like the the um, the little town ones, but they are super expensive, and I don't really have a lot of place to like keep them. So I've always meant to like get a set, build it, and then like repackage it and see if I could sell it used and buy a new set, and just because I really just enjoy the building of it. Um, but yeah, Legos are awesome. Jody Fowler, again, one of my patrons, asked who's my favorite woodworker. Um, in case you don't know, I like woodworking. Um, my favorite is Neil Pask. He's an Australian guy. Uh, super nice. He does great. He does. He does great videos. Super talented. Um, he recently made a uh, kayak and put Kumiko wood, Japanese woodworking stuff on it, uh, and it looked absolutely amazing. Um, and the whole time he's doing it, he's like. I don't know, this might be good. I, I'm just giving it a try and enjoying myself. Um, so he's super humble. Um, so I love that guy, Neil Pask. Um, his YouTube channel is Pask Makes. It's good. Michael Talbert on Patreon asked, uh, what's it like to have so many kids? Um, and it's amazing. I love it so much. A huge driving force is the people that connect with my music. Um, that's, you can see I've got a little slideshow going. Um, I always try, anytime I take selfies uh, with people at shows, I try and collect those. Some people send me pictures when they buy merch and stuff like that. I love having that because I can look back and, and see those people. Um, I'm actually trying to get a little digital photo frame so I can have this stuff running all the time. Uh, so if you happen to have uh, a photo of yourself with any of my stuff or, or if we've ever taken a picture at a show um, and I don't have it, please send it to me. I'd love to uh, add it to my collection. Kim from Twitter asked, what is my morning routine? It's pretty simple. Three SHs. Shit, shower, shave. In that order. There you go. That's all there is to it. Kim also asked, what is my go-to order from Cookout? Uh, if you don't know, Cookout is a... It's a fast food restaurant, but their food tastes like... Their burgers taste like the burger you eat when someone's grilling out at the park. Like, it's just... Mm, it's perfect. And they have cheer wine on tap, which is a cherry-flavored soda. It's like my favorite. Uh, so my go-to is a cheeseburger with a side of a corn dog, because yeah, they have corn dogs as sides, and then a cheer wine float. It's just, mm, it's perfect. Uh, whenever I play, like in Atlanta, after the show, I try and find the closest cookout. Um, and uh, if people, you know, can come with me, uh, I encourage them to join me. And so sometimes we get to have uh, dinner out uh, after a show, which is tons of fun. Uh, then Cinnamon Wolf on Twitter, asked, what is my favorite melee weapon? And that would be the Tunfa. I think I saw it in some like 80s ninja movie uh, and I was obsessed with them as a kid. I actually made my own out of a broomstick. Um, yeah. All right, on to the movie slash monsters section. Doreen Manning asked, what is my favorite horror movie? Um, I feel like that's a bit of an impossible question, but I will say The Autopsy of Jane Doe. Um, I love it because um, it's super atmospheric. It takes place in one building, um, which I love bottle movies like that. It takes place over one night. Again, I love that. Um, it's awesome. It's a bit of a mystery. Um, it's kind of like a haunted house movie, but it's about a body. So it's like a haunted body movie. It's pretty awesome. But if you would include horror comedy uh, in that, then I would say The Burbs. Hands down. The Burbs is the best horror comedy ever to be made. Maybe not the best. It's my favorite. And I love it. And if you've not seen The Burbs with Tom Hanks, you should check it out. It's awesome. She followed up with what is my favorite Kurt Russell movie, and that is also easy. It's Overboard. Barlow, one of my patrons, asked if I was forced to rebrand as any other universal monster or cryptid, uh, what would it be? That's a good question. Uh, I actually, when I came up with Vampire Stepdad, I actually kind of thought about what other monsters it could be, but I really felt like Vampire Stepdad just sounded the best. I feel like it created a good image. That said, I've always liked The Mummy. There's just something about that, like, decrepit, skinny, shambling guy wrapped up in in cotton that is just uh, always I've always liked that but if I had to be mummy stepdad I don't know it just it does not sound good mummy stepdad but I guess if I was forced to be like any cryptid it would be a creepy Japanese girl stepdad 
Denoted on Twitter asked if I would be friends with a werewolf. And uh, hell yeah, werewolves are great. You know, they are a little high maintenance. You know, they really need help about once a month, uh, you know, uh, looking out for them. But I mean, it's really no different than like being a designated driver. Josh Go Drink the Sea Brown on Twitter asked me, what is my favorite mythical creature? And to that, I would say Benicula. Action Speak Louder on Twitter asked, what is my favorite blood type? Um, and to be truthful, I like... I like it because it is both tasty and it is a good personal message. So my favorite blood type is B positive. Arcade Destiny asked, are you related to Count Duckula? And my answer is no, and it's racist for you to assume that we're all related. So I was asked who's my favorite fictional vampire slash my favorite vampire movie by Chris, Neil, and Arcade High. And my favorite vampire movie of all time is probably Fright Night, the original. Just a great movie. Again, another horror comedy. Um, got some great creature effects in it. Amazing music. It's good stuff. But if I had to pick a favorite vampire movie by cover art, it would definitely be Robo Vampire. And finally, last question by Barlow, one of my patrons, uh, is if I was in What We Do in the Shadows, who would be my favorite vampire to interact with and who would be my least favorite. I love the show, but uh, personally love the movie the most. Uh, I think Stu. Stu's just a cool guy. I like Stu, you know. Granted, he's not a vampire till the very end, but whatever. And my least favorite, I'll go with the TV show, The Nadia Doll creeps me out. I don't know what it is about it. That combination of puppet and CGI, uh, she just creeps me out. She just makes me uneasy. I don't like her. All right, so that's it as far as questions. I hope you had a good time. I had fun uh, answering them. Thank you to everybody who submitted questions. I really appreciate it. I couldn't really do it without you. Uh, but most of all, uh, thank you to my patrons and really anybody else who supports uh, me uh, in this crazy endeavor. Uh, thank you so much for helping me make uh, all my dreams possible. Um, I hope that you have a wonderful day or evening, or weekend, or whatever it is that's coming up. Uh, I hope you have a good time with it. All right. Love you, kiddo. Bye.